Welcome back to The Heat. We're talking about the ongoing crisis in Ukraine. Earlier today, I talked with Ihor Dolov, the Ukrainian ambassador to NATO. As we began our conversation, we were just learning about the Malaysia Airlines crash in Ukraine. And I began by asking him about what he knows. Sir, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good morning. Ambassador, do you know anything about this Malaysian Airlines flight that has gone down in Ukraine near the Russian border? What can you tell us? Uh, information is very limited. What I know for sure that uh, Ukrainian airspace uh, was closed for any flights up to the altitude of 7,000 meters. And reportedly, this aircraft was following the corridor uh, uh, on the altitude of more than 10,000 meters. No more details, unfortunately, uh, I have now. And, uh, uh, our people in the mission of Ukraine to NATO, as well as in Kiev, are trying to clarify the situation and to discover what happened. The passenger plane was headed from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur. Um, if it was an accident, it's obviously a tragic accident. But if it was shot down, how complicated will this make things in Ukraine and the ongoing crisis between Ukraine and Russia? Well, it's, uh, again, it's very difficult to <coughs> comment on the situation because we have very limited knowledge about uh, these tragic events. And uh, I just can repeat you that the altitude and the, the corridor which was used by that plane was about 10,000 meters beyond the uh, Earth. So uh, no more information, unfortunately. All right. Let's and unfortunately for Ukrainian uh, air forces, this is... This is not the first case when Ukrainian place, planes were downed by, by uh, armed groups uh, with using heavy arms and artillery systems which are not available in Ukrainian army. Let's move on to the tough new U.S. sanctions against Russia. President Putin says the sanctions are just driving Russia-American relations into a corner, into a dead end. Sir, if Ukraine wants more cooperation from Russia to resolve this crisis, do these sanctions help or hurt? Well, uh, my, my understanding, and this is the position of Ukrainian government, that sanctions is uh, the very powerful tool which uh, make the solution of the ongoing conflict more possible and more favorable conditions could be created using sanctions against the Russian Federation. That is why my president, President Poroshenko, welcomed yesterday night the decision of the European Council and the U.S. government decision to impose more sanctions on the Russian Federation. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, unfortunately, Russia continued to isolate itself because they continue to support uh, aggressive actions and aggressive groups fighting with Ukrainian army on Ukrainian territory. And what we witness that every day, mostly every night, more and more uh, vehicles and arms cross the border from the Russian side. More and more armed people uh, are in the action. Ambassador, more and more casualties, Russia uh, including has, civilians. Russia has are, denied arming yeah. these rebels or having any control over these rebels. Do you think sanctions so far have been effective? And will they work this time around, sanctions against Russia? Uh, I think that uh, until uh, real result is visible, and what is real result for us, that Russia closed the border, that Russia uh, stop to support separatists and armed groups. Russia stops supplies of munitions and arms to, to Ukrainian soil. Until this uh, would be possible, any kind of sanctions, in my uh, vision, uh, are uh, good and maybe the only uh, resource that we, we can use to convince Russian Federation to come back to other means than supporting and feeding uh, those armed illegal groups with more and more arms. Can Ukrainian forces get the situation under control in Donetsk and Luhansk? Uh, well, uh, some territories or, and some uh, points, some villages and small cities are being controlled by armed groups, illegal armed groups. As well as you know, they moved from the city of Slavyansk, a uh, big group of those armed people moved to Donetsk. So uh, to some extent, 
majority of the territories of Donetsk and Lugansk Oblast are controlled by Ukrainian uh, central government. But in some places, uh, armed groups continue to uh, occupy those territories and continue to fight. So the situation is extremely difficult, and that is why uh, we need uh, more and more actions with Avi Russia to stop the support of those armed groups. Ambassador, what, if anything, is Ukraine prepared to offer these pro-Russian separatists? Would that be a first step to some kind of negotiated deal? Uh, what kind of negotiations uh, are we talking about? Uh, there were several attempts to negotiate, but finally those armed groups, uh, they refused to negotiate. This is the first thing, the fact, which is very important to understand and to know. And the second thing, those groups are not united. They fight among themselves. So who are those uh, with whom Ukrainian side should negotiate? Uh, all attempts to, and you remember the ceasefire announced unilaterally by President Poroshenko. What, what was the end? They continued to fight, regardless of uh, Ukrainian decision. So actually, unfortunately, there is no party to negotiate. And uh, we are open to negotiate with all possible actors, but they are not ready and they do not want. So, this so, is the problem. So, Ambassador, what now? Clearly, that ceasefire did not work. Fighting has resumed. People are dying. What is the ultimate solution here? Ultimate solution is, again, to call on Russia to close the border. Do not supply <coughs> and to feed those uh, rebel groups with more arms. And uh, then this is the only way to avoid uh, additional casualties and more suffering of civil population. Does Ukraine have a role? What should Ukraine be doing for its part to resolve the crisis? Uh, well, Ukraine is trying to contaminate and to locate those armed groups which are very dangerous for not only for civil population but also for the stability of the region. And this is uh, the sense of uh, the operation which Ukrainian army and with the support of Ukrainian internal uh, ministries forces is going and continue to do in the, western, in the eastern Ukraine. Ambassador Dolov, Germany's Chancellor Angela Merkel has good relations with both Presidents Poroshenko and Russian President Vladimir Putin. Do you think she can play a vital role in bringing the two sides together? Well, uh, again, uh, let me uh, repeat known fact that uh, Ukrainian President is permanently in touch with all leaders who are interested in settlement of this conflict. And again, as you remember, many times conferences with the involvement of Chancellor Merkel and President of France and Russian side didn't produce visible result until now, unfortunately. So we are uh, in favor of any kind of negotiations, but we expect that uh, negotiations would bring results. And we do not see result, unfortunately. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Ambassador Ihor Dalov. When we come back, we will get a reaction from Russia to the Malaysia Airlines crash in Ukraine and the ongoing conflict in the region coming up on The Heath.